good day to each and everyone. So this is our discussions about our new lesson for today. And that is the uh, Taekwondo, which is uh, we discussed about uh, last time we discussed about uh, the introduction of the sports. So this is the continuation of our discussion. So let's start. So our topic for today, basically, it's all about Taekwondo. We're in... Um, we are very familiar for this kind of sports and of course we all know that taekwondo is is also known as a uh, self defense so they created an art a certain player or they designed or they trained a certain player to of course have a uh, what do you call this have a skillful and of course very equipped when it comes to uh when it comes to uh, performing Taekwondo. So let's start talking about Taekwondo, guys. So what is Taekwondo? So when we say Taekwondo, also known as Tae, Kwan, Do, okay? So those are words in Hangul, which means um, in Tae, when we say Tae, that is uh, pertains to your leg. And of course, you have to step on, and of course, you are required to do uh, kicking, okay? Then Kwan is your fist, as an individual and of course you have to step on also just to, just like your tay in order to form or to create excuse me punch and of course do is the discipline okay so when we say discipline this is the, your um you're going to put control in creating your tay or in creating your kick and of course in creating your punch as an individual or taekwondo athlete so it is basically it is the uh, giving a full control to your uh, uh, kicks and of course punch. Next we have uh, Taekwondo is the art of self defense. So it is the art of self defense that can be uh, it that can be a form of a sports that can be a form of self defense that can be a form of um, entertainment. Okay, that is really busy uh, and of course originally, originally came from Korea. So there's no specific place in Korea wherein Taekwondo existed during the time. So let's find out later if they have a specific place wherein uh, Taekwondo is uh, ex uh, existed in that place. And of course, it is recognized as one of the oldest forms of martial arts in the world, reaching back over 2,000 years. So imagine na pakadagal na niyang nag exist and of course, they considered this one of the oldest forms of martial arts in the world. Same with Taekwondo, uh, same with uh, Kung Fu, Karate, Judo, Muay Thai, and of course, your Arnis. Okay? And of course, let's have the brief history of Taekwondo. So one of the earliest clues of Taekwondo's existence is mural painted or mural paintings on the wall of a tomb. So when we say tomb, this is the hymn of a certain uh, dead, dead person, okay? So they saw the existence of Taekwondo in that paintings. And of course, they have already their um, evidences or proof that Taekwondo during that time is really existed, okay? And that was built and they saw the discover in the Korean kingdom of Bugorio between 37 before, 37 before Christ and 66 after death. So we have three uh, kingdoms wherein uh, composed of, uh, Korea before is composed of three kingdoms. So we have kingdom of Gugorio, kingdom of Pekchi, kingdom of Sila. So those kingdoms have the uh, power to rule within their kingdoms. And of course, they have to protect this in order for them to um, have a peaceful life in their kingdom. Okay, so the drawing shows uh, unarmed figures facing each other in a Taekwondo style stance. Okay, so they saw in that drawing that there's already in, uh, there's already existence. Of course, they do practices. They do sparring, uh, combat style, and of course the stance and forms of Taekwondo. So I have here, guys, some examples of paintings wherein uh, this those paintings have the uh, proof that is, uh, Taekwondo is really existed during that time. Okay, so as you can see, they are wearing um, uh, proper clothing in that uh, in that particular activity. And of course, they do sparring and of course, stunts as a uh, player or as a combative uh, person during that time. Okay, and of course, 
Additional drawings in the thumb show figures performing blacks and wearing uniforms similar to those used in modern day Taekwondo training. So they have to wear proper clothing or very lousy um, cloth in order for them to move confidently. And of course, they uh, they can execute their um, they can execute their what do you call this their stunts without hesitant. So you have to wear proper clothing. They call it do uh, do book as a Korean term for their proper clothing for Taekwondo. So the advancement of Taekwondo and its techniques develop as the country of Korea develop. So as they uh, as Korea developing, and of course there's also at the advancement and development of uh, techniques and most especially the rules and regulations about this sports and of course. Uh, there's an evolution or changes that we're in uh, in a betterment for uh, the Taekwondo itself. So there are examples and history of Taekwondo training in virtually all the records of different kingdoms that existed within the country throughout the centuries. So there's a lot of evidences in those three kingdoms that they were practicing Taekwondo during that time. And of course, they have the uh, evidences wherein um, they're already uh, having this kind of uh, um, sports during their uh, primitive times, okay? So as you can see here, the uh, land area of uh, the kingdoms and of course the map of Korea before, okay? So we have the bigger kingdoms. We have the uh, Gugorio, second is the Pekchi. And of course, kingdom of Sila is, this, is, this, is the smallest, um, smallest, kingdom among those three kingdoms. So they achieved, the uh, the highest form of the ancient art was achieved in the kingdom of Sila, wherein they are, um, they are very productive and both, of course, they are very creative uh, during their times because they achieved the highest form of ancient art. So they, they uh, do a lot of paintings, they do a lot of uh, practices wherein they perform um, ancient art or they created ancient art during that time. And of course, as you can see, they are the they are the tiny kingdom or the smallest kingdom among three kingdoms. So this tiny kingdom constantly face attacks and opposition from larger and stronger areas. Okay, so they experience oppressions, marginalization, uh, mili militarization, and of course, um, battles or wars because they they are they they have the smallest land areas and of course they have to defend their areas their, their land areas it is because um, also on colonization on so they have to colonize a certain kingdom in order for them to be more powerful and of course more uh, more having a uh, authority when it comes to power and of course um, economy okay so also on colonization on during that time and of course as a result the real the ruler of the kingdom king jin hung establish an elite group of warriors called the Huarang or Flower of Youth. So na-alarm yung king. That's why he created or he established establishing an elite group of warriors. They called it Huarang. Okay? So the Huarang is the defender or the protector of their, the, of their tiny kingdom. And of course, they can be uh, helpful in order to, uh, to promote peace and of course, order in their... Um, kingdoms okay and of course the huarang consisted consisted of the sons of nobles within the kingdom so they were carefully selected and formally trained in all aspects of military skills including an armed combat which at the time was known as taking so they are the sons of the nobles or the highest personnel during uh, in kingdom of sila including the sons of the king so they were carefully selected and of course they formally trained and they were they trained them to be more uh, skillful or knowledgeable about military skills and of course um, military combats including the taekyun which is the term or the first term before taekwondo was uh, established as taekwondo okay and of course it is significant that the huarang were taught not only the importance of developing their bodies but minds and spirits as well so that is the uh, uh, the rule of or how they designed huarang as their protector and of course a uh, warrior during that time okay so huarang is the best um, 
among the best. Okay, because they were carefully selected. So there's a screening during that time. Okay, in selection apo, on how to be a huara. Okay, so in addition to fighting techniques, the young warriors were instructed in history, poetry, and of course your philosophy. So hindi lang sila nagpo-focus. They were not focusing only on uh, military skills and trainings, practices, something like that, or combative, combative uh, activity, but also they were instructed or they obliged to study about their history, their poetry, and of course, a philosophy. So the entire body of study was known as Warangdo. So that is the institutions wherein uh, they, uh, they, uh, they do such training, studies, and of course, practices on how to be a good Warang someday. So the Warang gained skills not only for battle, but for daily life. So they were designed not only for uh, combating or of course for the battles, but also uh, they designed also to serve the people within the kingdom. Okay, so that is the uh, rule and of course objectives of the king during that times to protect and of course to serve people in the, in, in the kingdom of Sila. Okay, and of course this relates directly to modern uh, Taekwondo training. So it means to say that same approaches, same um, sequence of practice or trainings that they're uh, they're going to uh, provide to a certain uh, student so they were uh, they were providing pro uh, self defense skills as well as improving their character or their character formation personal development their self discipline confidence and that can be applied to any task okay so hindi lang sila nagfo-focus on how they fight or on how to uh, execute skills but they are more focusing in um, character and of course discipline and uh, your principles as a taekwondo player so nagpo focus muna sila sa discipline before they proceed to execution of skills okay so that is the training in taekwondo and of course following the sila dynasty came the koryu dynasty which is the 930 uh, that was in uh, 935 after death to 1352 after that, from which Korea takes its name. So, Koryo, Korea, during that time. Okay? And of course, uh, a, uh, uh, the organized um, entertaining uh, sports was born. Very entertaining sport was born. And of course, uh, that, that is a martial arts practice, also known as the Sobakdo. So, you can see the evolution of the uh, or the changes of name of the taekwondo so from taekyun to huarangdo and to sobakdo so the sobakdo is a popular as an organized sports with detailed rules uh, detailed instructions detailed, detailed mechanics and of course only the royal family sponsored competitions and demonstrations and they are the one who conducted or having the authority to uh, conduct competitions and of course demonstrations and martial arts became deeply rooted in korean culture so as time goes by uh, it is part of their culture so ev every day i think and every individual in korea most especially the male individuals having a a uh, knowledge or about uh, taekwondo because it is really part of their culture as a korean so we, they must learn taekwondo okay and of course, I think that is um, mandated to them to study about Taekwondo. Okay. And of course, we have the Taekwondo in the United States. So the introduction of Taekwondo in the United States began during the 1950s when a handful of pioneering master instructors traveled to America to spread the art. So there's a uh, uh, some uh, instructors or master instructors who are who goes to who went to Korea to um, introduce or demonstrate the teachings and discipline of Taekwondo during 1950s. And of course, throughout the few decades, Taekwondo grew in popularity, not only as a martial art, but as an international sport. So they saw a potential that these uh, self-defense uh, skills or the self-defense activity can be a uh, international sport. That's why it became popular to many Americans and of course they established a lot of um, demonstrations or taekwondo classes during in the uh, in the United States okay so 1973 
Korea during 1973, Korea hosted the first Taekwondo World Championship. So there is already a tournament during that time. And at the same year, the World Taekwondo Federation was established as the international governing body for the sports aspects of Taekwondo. So the rule of this uh, international body or international governing body of World Taekwondo Federation is the, they are the one who is responsible in creating new set of rules and regulations. And of course, they have the uh, power to revise it or they have the power to uh, put something um, uh, new in, a, in, a, in the rules or the mechanics or instructions of the game and in order to for the betterment of the uh, uh, sports. Okay, so they are the one who also conducted trainings, practices, and they have fun for this and uh, they have the best facilities to have a training and of course practices in Taekwondo. Okay, so today the World Taekwondo Federation counts 100 120 separate countries as its members, representing 20 million practitioners. So, kasama na dyan yung Pilipinas. So, as you can see here in Philippines, we have a lot of Taekwondo classes or studio wherein uh, many Filipinos or young individuals having the uh, or they are they want to engage themselves in uh, Taekwondo. So, these numbers earn Taekwondo the distinction of being the most practiced martial art in the world. So, as you can see, there's uh, this sport is very popular. That's why many of people wants to engage themselves in this kind of sport and of course they uh, they say that this is the most practiced martial art in the world compare mo sa uh, kung fu sa karate sa judo muay thai and of course our, our artists here in philippines so uh, taekwondo is the most oldest forms of martial arts and of course very popular to many people okay so Taekwondo first gained acceptance as an Olympic sport when it appeared as a demonstration in the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games. So there's an acceptance already so because maybe they proposed this activity or this sports in Olympic committees or organizations wherein there's an acceptance. So na accept na siya as a uh, official sports, but uh, as time goes by, um, there is also a demonstration event wherein they uh, they can they spread the or they teach the discipline or the uh, philosophy about this sports and how to do it how to um, execute it and what all those skills needed in playing or needed in executing those uh, this kind of sports okay so that was held in Seoul South Korea during the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games. Okay, and of course, Taekwondo became a full medal sport competition. So there's already first competition about Taekwondo in Olympics. And that was held in Sydney, Australia during 2000, the Olympic, uh, Sydney Olympics, okay, in Australia. Okay, there's already a full medal sport competition. So the, what, that was the first um, sports competition wherein uh, they have already their champions or the best uh, taekwondo player in the world or in olympics okay so let's have the purpose of taekwondo so not just only for the self-defense for entertainment for a serve as sports but it can be also have our taekwondo gets you fit okay so if we engage ourselves in uh, taekwondo so we ex we are experiencing a lot of trainings practices and of course exercises wherein it can be uh, improving or it can be improve our uh, physical body. And of course, we can gain a physically fit body. And of course, that is the uh, best outcome for your trainings and of course, practices. So you can easily get fit and of course, to, to make your body uh, healthy and of course, um, productive, okay? And of course, aerobic exercise, you know, that is the purpose of Taekwondo. So when we say aerobic exercise, it focuses on our cardiovascular system wherein uh, we can uh, improve our endurance in our system in order to prolong our body in a certain exercise. So uh, we promote siya ng aerobic exercise, which makes our heart and our lungs works better and effect effect effectively. Okay, and of course, it promotes also anaerobic exercise, and of course, anaerobic exercise also promoting, um, or in uh, this is uh, exercise focuses on building of uh, muscles or lean muscles and bones. Okay, to gain a muscular um, endurance 
strength, and of course, your power and flexibility as a Taekwondo player. Okay? And of course, we have a strength training wherein we are required to, uh, to carry heavy equipments in order to build a uh, good posture. And of course, we can carry um, heavy things just like uh, in uh, trainings in, uh, on how to select a uh, good policeman or um, firefighter. Uh, soldier okay and of course they are promoting a uh, good posture while we are walking while we are sitting while we are sleeping and of course standing as well okay so strength training so and of course this is very essential to a certain taekwondo player so taekwondo stretching so we have to stretch our body in order to reach or exercise our legs most especially our legs because we want to reach the highest point of our legs if we do kicks okay and of course your body doesn't stiffen up as you get older so hindi siya basta basta naninigas if you if you guys having a or a, if you engage yourself in taekwondo okay and let's have the uh tenets of taekwondo okay so when we say tenets guys those these are the principles discipline or philosophy that uh, a taekwondo player must impose to herself to his or herself okay as a taekwondo player and of course first one is the courtesy so being uh, or the yui so being polite and of course uh, being respectful for others so you have to respect your uh, the people surrounds you not only for your superiors your uh, auntie your lola and of course your um, papa and mama but uh, you can respect the rights of others you can respect uh, the individuality or the uh, having the ability, having the uniqueness of everyone. Okay, and of course, you have to behave in a well-mannered way. You have to wear um, proper clothing. And of course, you, they teach you how to, uh, how to improve your civil fashion as an individual. So that is courtesy. Being humble all the time, being uh, demure. Okay, and of course, next is the... Yumchi or the integrity. Okay, so showing good character, honesty, prudence, and of course, this decency, behaving ethically and morally. So it, it is more on your individual purity as an as a person. Okay, you have to show good character, you have to uh, work with integrity, you have to compete with integrity, you have to take your exams and quizzes with integrity. So yeah, dapat malinis yung uh, trabaho natin or malinis yung pagka pagkatao natin as an uh, individual player. Okay? And of course, we have the um, perseverance. So not just only here in uh, Taekwondo show. Every people should um, impose or uh, portray this kind of um, behavior or discipline. So per purposefully pursuing a course of action despite of difficulty, persistence, or discouragement. So they teach us how to manage difficulties or struggles in life. And of course, uh, how to deal with your problems, how to manage it, how to um, solve it, okay? And of course, they teach us how to be buoyant. So when we say buoyant, this is how we uh, deal with problems with confidently beautiful with the heart chart. <laughs> Okay, you can you can uh, you can be uh, more resistance among those among those problems. Okay, so pag nakaka experience ka ng, ng difficulties in life, you have to be persevere or you have to strive more in order to achieve your dreams or in order to uh, be in success. Okay, as same situations uh, sa inyo as a student, so you have to study hard, you have to uh, give all sacrifices in order to achieve your goals. So same within within these sports. Okay, it is full of uh, patience, it is full of um, striving more, okay? So kung pag, kapag kulang pa, you have to uh, increase your perseverance in order to surpass all the challenges in life, okay? And of course, cookie or the self-control. So keeping one's emotions, desires, and impulses in check and exercising control in their expression. So we have to uh, control our feelings and, of course, emotions, most especially if we are angry, okay, or, or we are experiencing um, uh, discouragement. Because there's a lot of uh, 
negative or things or negative things na pwedeng uh, pagsisihan natin. Makakagawa tayo ng mga hindi magagandang bagay na maaaring pagsisihan natin siya at the end of the day. Okay? So, we have to uh, control ourselves, most especially in anger. And of course, pwede rin siyang makontrol natin in Uh, we have to control also the too much sadness, too much happiness because sometimes in too much sadness can lead to depression. Okay? So we have to uh, control ourselves, most especially a, in emotions. So we have to guard our emotions. Okay? And of course, lastly, we have the big chill bull or the indomitable spirit. So same spirit with the competitive spirit that the spirit can be broken or conquered. So... Uh, the strength of spirit that can that comes from the knowing oneself to you have to build trust or you have the trust in yourself in order to conquer all the challenges in your life okay so you know your capabilities your ability your weaknesses as a as an individual so uh, you are confidently um you are confidently managing your struggles in life So, you have to show your strong personality, strong emotions, or strong emotions, strong aura in order to show to them that you can surpass all the challenges in life. And of course, those are the five uh, tenets of Taekwondo that should uh, Taekwondo player must uh, portray or build in his or her personality as an individual. Okay? So next, we have the basic commands and words in Taekwondo, wherein we had to learn about uh, some Hangul words. And of course, because it is part of their culture. So if we want to learn about something in Korea, most especially in Taekwondo, we have to study first their cultures and traditions, the words, and of course, the commands and words they, uh, they use in uh, performing or in uh, in conducting uh, taekwondo tournament or competitions okay so let's have attention or they uh, they uh, they call it chariot okay so if the master or the taekwondo master says chariot well, whatever you are doing uh, you can uh, you can give your uh, pay attention or you can uh, stop while you while uh, you are doing or something na meron kang ginagawa so you have to pay attention and that is the signs of obedience and of course um <laughs> uh, respect to your um taekwondo master okay so chariot next begin or start okay so si jack so if if there a um instructions that uh the the, uh, instru uh, the instructor want you to do so They say that uh, see Jack, and of course you have to start what you are, what they instructed you to do. Okay, and of course black. Also, something black is uh, you are. This is a form of defensive skills in order to protect yourself uh, from the attacks coming from the opponent team. Okay, so Maki or Maki, they call it Maki or Maki. <laughs> High block. Um, they call it nokon de maki, inside black and maki, low black nachun de maki, and outside black bakat maki. Okay, so those are the kinds of blocks. Okay, and of course we have the bow that is a very iconic um, practice in doing taekwondo. So if your if your taekwondo master says kyung ye, you have to uh, bow to your opponent player, and that is a sign of good sportsmanship. That is a sign of Um, being uh, respectful all the time okay so uh, we do bowing in uh, before the tournament starts and of course at the end of the tournament you will going to bow also okay so that is a very iconic um, movement inside or in a competitions or tournament okay we have also continue okay sock your feast is chumok, foot, pal, forms, pumse, hands, son, head, muli or mure, instructor, you can call me as sabung nim, okay, or so sing nim, song sing nim. And of course, we have the kick, chagi, knee, your knee is moriyop, leg is dari. And of course, we have the punch or strike, or they can call it chige or chiruge, ready, chunbe, Referee, you can call the referee Chusem. Okay. 
res is choose and of course return is baro. So if the instructor or the referee says baro, you have to face him or her, okay? Because that is a sign of um, respect and of course obedience. So ginagawa yan at the end of the, your form or pattern or your sparring, okay? And of course, self-defense, hosin sol or hosin sol. Okay, so sparring, hyuruge, stands, suke, stop, kalyo, taekwondo school, studio, or class. That is tu chung. Or you're going to say thank you in a polite manner. You have to say kam sa nida. Okay, and of course, uniform, tubok. And of course, this is also very iconic um, uh, gesture or um, words in uh, Taekwondo. So if they do uh, kicking or punching, madalas naririnig natin to in their sparring or executions, okay, or exhibitions. So they say, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so those are uh, uh, yell or kihap, wherein they need to yell it in order for them to um, bring out the power of kicks and of course the power of punch within their cells, okay? And of course, we have the basic counting in uh, Korea. So in counting, we don't, in counting in Taekwondo, we don't use isa, dalawa, tatlo, or one, two, three, four, but we use hana, dul, set, nat, dasot, yasot, ilgup, yodol, ahop, and of course, your yol. So that is the proper counting in Hangul or in Korean language. Okay, so we must learn those commands and of course basic words in order for us to be uh, more familiarized about on how to command and of course how to give words to those um, taekwondo players or to yourself as well okay so that ends our discussion for this day and of course i hope you've learned a lot from this lesson okay so see you again next week and uh, goodbye and god bless everyone